morning guys, do not bother my face. I literally woke up five minutes ago. But today I'm so excited because I am going to be uploading a video. I already filmed it and edited it, but I'm doing the intro right now. It is going to be DIY fall clothing and I'm so pumped for this video because the pieces in this video are insane guys. Like I'm so, so excited. They're super wearable, super on trend, super like expensive, but we're getting the look for less. And if you do like DIY videos, I actually have a second YouTube channel that is called Lone Fox Home, which I'm going to link in a card somewhere above. And then I'm also going to put it in the description box below. I post every single week over there. So it is a second completely different channel from the one you are on now and it's solely just DIY and home decor so if you want to go check that out I would love for you to be part of the Lone Fox family and if you're not already make sure to subscribe to this channel for your daily dose of Drew and yeah I'm really excited about this video so let's just jump on into it This first project is a contrast stitch v-neck sweater, which is inspired by this one from Raf Simmons, but it's $1,500, so no. We're using a sweater, some yarn, a yarn needle, and scissors to create this. And I just have this oversized sweater in my collection since actually high school. I've had this forever, and I'm using a Sharpie just to create a brand new neckline for it, which is going to be a V-shape. And I just freehanded that because honestly, it's very, very random. The Raf Simmons one is very like, it's not perfect, which is something that I loved about it. And it's very DIY looking as well, which is something perfect because we can you can mess it up and it doesn't even matter. So I cut off the neckline and I cut off the tag so we can make our own garment. Sorry, Forever 21. And then I went ahead and I strung some yarn. This is just a thinner black yarn with a yarn needle. And this is just from the craft store. And all I did was go around the entire neckline using a sort of like, I guess, whip stitch. I don't even know what this stitch is called. Um, if I can find it, I'll put it on the screen because there's definitely a name for it. But what I did was went in through the back and then around the garment fabric, I'm just basically locking in that edge. That way the knit doesn't fray because of course we did cut a knit, which is not very good because the knit typically will fray. So what I'm doing is locking in that edge using a bit of yarn, but since I'm using a contrast stitching yarn and I'm doing it very chunky, it gives it that very DIY sort of Raph Simmons element that I love. including this bottom corner piece and then working all the way around the entire neckline until I get back to where I started, which I'm going to, of course, tie it off right when I get back to where I started at. And then I kind of realized that I wanted to add one more strip. It just kind of looked very random. I was like, I need something to really lock in this area and make it look like a full on V shape. So what I did was just use a very wide single stitch of yarn around the entire neckline. As you can see, I'm doing about inch sections with this um, all around the neckline, just about an inch and a half away from where we did that whip stitch around the edge. And I'm doing this just to sort of reshape the neckline and show that there's a V shape on it. And I'm also um, bringing it down to the hemline as well because I really wanted to showcase uh, not only the top portion of the sweater but also have a little bit of detail in the bottom portion just to sort of overall give it that finished fresh look and this is how you complete the full-on v-neck raf simmons inspired sweater I really can't believe I created these boots. I don't even know how I did it, but just watch and learn. So what I used was some black faux leather, some rings, E6000, a pair of scissors and a ruler, and this pair of ASOS Chelsea boots that I've had for a while in my collection, but I'm knocking off this pair of YSL boots that was $1,200, which I love to death. So what I'm starting off by doing is laying down my faux leather fabric and cutting three inch strips out of this faux leather fabric. And I flipped it over and just used a ruler just to measure out three inch strips. My ruler was actually three inches wide, which which is perfect. So I cut out a total of six 18 by three inch strips, which I'll put that measurement on the screen for you guys. And then I cut them out um, using a pair of fabric scissors and just cut all the strips down, of course, and then cut across just to get your total amount. But guys, look at how much this cost, $3.12 for this fabric. So this boot DIY was like so inexpensive. And here you can see me creating the little strips. These are the six three by 18 inch strips that I created. And next, what we're going to do is use a hot glue gun, which I didn't mention in the supplies in the beginning. I was actually going to use E6000 for this part, but I found that the E6000 was just so hard to have stick that I really wanted the hot glue just to like instantly bond it together. And honestly, it is so freaking strong. I tried ripping it apart and I couldn't even rip it apart. I think this backing has something to do with 
that. And what I did was flip over each side and use a hot glue gun right on the edge to sort of create a brand new edge. That way when you flip this strap over, it looks very clean and polished and folded over as opposed to just like a very raw edge, especially with a faux leather. It doesn't look very great. With the real leather, you can get away with it, but I really wanted to use a faux leather for this project. So I flipped it over and did this to all six strands so that when I had them completely done, they looked like this. And then these rings are actually from the handbag section inside of Joann's, like if you wanted to create your own handbag. And what I did was I did the wrong side, added a little bit of glue, and then attached it to each other around the ring. Pretty self-explanatory if you watch the video. And then I used a couple of just little clips to hold that down while I did it to the other two because you're going to be attaching three total strips of leather to this one ring. Um, so I did that again, of course, and then I used a clip to secure that on. that last clip there and this is what those look like it literally looks like i'm creating bondage but oh well and then eight hours later you can remove those clips it's all nice and dry and we can start attaching this to the boot so what i did was i just laid it over the boot one strip is going to go underneath the heel and then two are going to go around the front and the back flip it over to the opposite side and this is where you're going to start securing the strips to the second ring what i did was slip the strip through the ring um, on the front side and then i did the same thing on the back side and i also did the same thing on the bottom this is just going to kind of get that tightness correct this is just being done to get the placement correct and also get the tightness of these strands correct so you can kind of adjust it as you go and sort of pull on it until you get a nice finished look and then i used a pair of scissors to cut off the excess piece of faux leather and a little bit of glue just repeating the process that we did prior and sticking it down with um the binder clips just to hold that while it dries i did it on the top portion and of course i did it on the bottom portion and the side portion just to completely finish it off you can slip it on and it looks incredible. I am so happy with this project. This last project here is one that is super simple, but I love it so much. All you need is a denim jacket, some scissors, and an X-Acto knife. And we're just recreating a deconstructed denim jacket. So what I'm doing first is cutting off the entire neck collar. Yes, I am doing that. I'm really just deconstructing it in every single way that I possibly can, cutting off the front pocket. I love this. I don't think a lot of people think to do this, but I think it adds such a nice, like very distressed element to the jacket. So I'm cutting off the pocket completely, everything from the pocket, just on one side side because you're going to be able to see the pocket on the other side so you're going to know there was a pocket there but it got ripped off. I'm also cutting off the hems of the arm and I'm also going to be cutting off the hem of the entire jacket in general and inside of these little sections you can actually pull out all the excess fabric that's just like tucked away in there and cut it away if you need to but this is instantly going to create a more distressed look on such a basic jacket. This one was from Cotton On for $20 and I really made it look like a more expensive luxury piece that was handmade and handcrafted and you can use an X-Acto knife to to go in and really rough up those edges or honestly if i was you i just didn't have time in this video i would throw it in the washing machine and throw it in the dryer and it's going to really really fray those edges and give them a nice washed and worn in distressed look and that is your completed deconstructed jacket So those were all of the projects. I hope you guys really enjoyed them. I personally was obsessed with the boots, obsessed with the sweater, and honestly obsessed with the jacket too. So I liked everything. I think they're super fun and super easy to do. I did all three in like a four hour, five hour span of time. So they didn't take me very long at all. And I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. And I cannot wait for the fall season so we can actually start wearing some of these pieces because right now in LA, it's still pretty hot, but I wanted to get everybody prepared. So I think that's about all. And I love you all so much. Goodbye. Oh, yeah.